Ah. Big mistakes. Success. Hand tools. This video's got it all. This is Nate from Burrow and Feather. This is the Glen Chair. I got a really good deal on this slab because I had a quite a few cracks through the middle. Uh, so he really just didn't want to deal with it, but I was willing to use the sides to make a chair. Uh, this video has a few new skills for me, like using templates to create parts and making a chair. I don't know why making a chair intimidates me. Probably because it has so many different types of parts. The angle of the chair, the height of the chair. It's like if it's leaned back too far, old people don't want to sit in it. And if it's too short, old people don't want to sit in it. But then if it's not comfortable, low, long, loungy, then young people don't want to sit in it. So, I mean, you can't make everyone happy, but I guess in this case, we're, we're going to try. Hey guys, Nate here. Uh, it's the next day. Last night I spent well over an hour retuning all of my tools and rechecking everything because after milling up my lumber, I went to go put a jointed edge on my two flat surfaces and um, I was off about an eighth of an inch or with a span of about five inches. And uh, I couldn't figure out for the life of me how. Um, I calibrate all of my tools with uh, an engineering square that I purchased uh, that came in a box that was certified. And the reason I had so much trouble was because of this stupid square. I was using it to check my fence on my jointer and my jointer is perfectly set to this square. So it couldn't be wrong, right? If I just take a square here and I'll see if I can get this on camera. Um, my square is off, um, substantially. Needless to say, that square was as useless as windows on a submarine. So I ended up in the trash. I've never used templates before, but it made making complicated joints much, much easier. I don't want you to think I just came up with these templates by myself and this is designed by myself. This is a chair that was designed by... Sean over at Four Eyes Furniture, and they have the templates available for purchase on their website. Um, it made it super easy with their lessons to build this chair because I would have had no idea where to start. Um, but after building this chair, I now have the knowledge to go on and make and design chairs for myself and definitely much more comfortable with making curves and intricate pieces attached to each other. If you guys are interested in those plans, I'll make sure there's a link down in the description so you can check them out for yourself. As you guys saw, I used a test piece. Uh, when I had to actually cut the walnut, I was terrified because this stuff's expensive. Um, one thing I have been learning is that mistakes are really expensive in the furniture world. Um, when you cut up a $300 plus dollar piece of wood, um, you make a mistake and it, it's not, it's not fun. It was like Christmas morning went out and bought my dust extractor and I've been wanting one for so long. I literally made a spot under my bench for it months ago. Um, but I finally bit the bullet and bought one and it is absolutely amazing. Um, it's expensive, but they're definitely worth the money. Trying to fit four of these tenons together was actually kind of hard. Um, they really didn't want to go in there, and I, I couldn't figure out why, and we'll learn why later. Um, but yeah, no, I, I struggled to get this piece in, um, but, it, but it eventually got there. Throughout this project, you'll see me jumping back and forth, doing glue-ups, and then doing working on other things, and then coming back and do more glue-ups because... I only have a set amount of clamps. No one told me you needed like a hundred different clamps and then all clamps of different sizes too, yeah. The material that you see me cutting up now is set aside for the rails and slats for the seat part. The majority of the seat will be made out of walnut, but the slats will be made out of hard maple, just for a bit of contrast. Once my clamps were freed up, I could actually jump on gluing up 
the these are the side rails of the chair itself. I don't know the technical terms. Side rails, the legs, the stretchers. There's a stretcher in there somewhere. I'm not too sure. But I could finally cut all the rest of my parts from my seat and while the rest of it was gluing up. This is Ace. He likes to watch what I do when he hangs out in the shop very intentively. And he's a good boy. All of my seat parts were attached with dominoes, so I had to go through and make sure each one was away from the edge of the actual board, so that way I didn't accidentally cut into them. Uh, I don't have an actual work table yet, um, but I needed a way to hold these pieces down, so I, I just drilled some holes in the table that I have, uh, and it worked out really, really well, actually. With all the projects I do, I try to make a point of doing something that I've never done before. Even if that means I'm going to make a mistake, uh, I try to learn from the process. I am not one of those people who like to sit there and say, I can do it because I've never tried it. So for me to sit there and continue to say, yeah, I, I'm good, I'm great, I can do it, it's, it, I need proof. I need to see myself do it, I need to physically do it myself. And not only that, there's just a massive satisfaction I get from stepping back and looking at what I built. Uh, in my prior line of work, I didn't get that satisfaction, and this is why I do what I do now. So, remember how I couldn't get those pieces to glue up earlier? Well, when I had actually stacked them up after they were already glued up, I realized that I somehow ah. flipped the top arm of the chair backwards. Luckily, I had some extra cutoffs, so I was able to cut the arm away from both legs and reattach it the correct way with the newly made arm. I also thought I was being pretty slick and made a stick with some sandpaper on it to get in between those gaps there. Make sure you clean your joints. I was in a rush to glue these up and I didn't clean the joints and it was such a pain to clean afterwards. It took hours. I have never taken my track saw off 90 and if you had watched any of my other videos, you know that my track saw is my handy down from my father. And, you know, when he gave it to me, he said, oh, yeah, the the angle adjustment has something wrong with it, but I don't remember what it was. So while I was cutting this, I'm like, oh, man, I really hope it doesn't mess up what I just did. But luckily, it, it stayed in place. It stayed at 45 or whatever that angle was. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. And the cut was a success. It was really cool, actually. I'll have to remember that trip in the future because it was really easy to do. It made it really easy to throw an edge or an angle on the end of a piece. And it's starting to look like a chair, right? Yeah. So instead of using the pine blocks that I had used earlier, which kept cracking on me, I made these round walnut and hard maple blocks. They are so much better. Um, I actually put some sandpaper on the bottom too so they wouldn't slide, and I stored them for future use for odd angle glue-ups and things like that because you can't buy anything um, that I know of unless you guys know. If you guys do know, let me know in the comments because I'm sure... There might be something out there, but I couldn't find it, so I just made some for myself. At this point in the build, I'm ready to attach the seat to the rails, and I wanted to do so with dominoes. Uh, I could also have done it with screws, but I just think it looks cleaner, and I have a Vestal domino, so might as well use it. There was a lot of dominoes in this thing. I literally went through the majority of my sizes. I actually had to go get other sizes and other bits because I didn't even have them. Um, but it was all worth it in the end because it looks really clean.
This part was really tricky because it attached the rails to the legs of the chair. And I actually made a huge mistake here and accidentally bumped the domino into the leg. So Ace and I went to the store to get some air, um, vent a bit of frustration. When I came back, I decided that I would work through it. I thought maybe I could inlay a feather into the side to cover it, but it was way too small, at least the ones that I ordered. I ordered some bigger ones too, but those were uh, obviously way, way too big. So I had to come up with a different idea. I decided that I would inlay a like piece of wood because I had some cutoffs. So I found a piece that matched perfectly color and grain direction. Um, and then I m traced it with my finger for some reason. Uh, and then I actually traced it with a marking knife to start the inlay process. A quick tip for using marking knives, when you start to trace an object, sometimes the grain will pull the tip of the marking knife. So your first couple strokes should be very gentle and then progressively you can add more force as it starts to create deeper and deeper marks. As stressful as it was to make a mistake, the act of inlaying was actually a lot of fun and I really enjoyed doing so, um, even though it was technically a mistake. Once the glue was dry, I could cut off the extra wood. Just gave it a quick sand, and it was like it never happened. Right? Right? Earlier you guys saw this brass little feather that I am very excited to put um, as my signature on the pieces that I do, I decided to put this one in the top of the armchair. That way you could fiddle with it while you sit in the chair. And it, I think it came out really, really nice. Um, I've never inlaid something this small. So it, after doing a couple of trial runs, I mustered up the courage to try it on the actual chair itself. And it came out pretty good. Uh, I am pretty happy with the results. And um, even the ones I've done even more recently, I've gotten better and better. I ended up going online and looking up how people do smaller inlays. And I see these instrument builders that do such intricate work. And it's so impressive to me. Um, they really make it look so easy, but it really, really isn't. We are ready at this point to put the final touches on the rest of the chair. All the little roundovers and smoothing off all the edges. All this intricate work really is fun. It takes me a couple hours to do, especially like the handwork by chisel, but it really makes all the difference in the final product. You know, the pipe clamps that you see on the wall there were actually hand-me-down clamps from my girlfriend's grandfather, and I never thought I was gonna get to use them because they seemed old-fashioned to me, and I didn't, I don't know, they, they just looked old, and we were so used to these parallel clamps and how good they are, but they worked so good, and I really do prefer them over these F-style clamps. We were ready for finish at this point, so after giving it a nice wipe down with some mineral spirits, I got to drink some of my coffee and wait. And then we were ready for Rubio. Uh, I do prefer Rubio if you guys watch my other videos. It's just so easy to apply and the results are very consistent, at least on things like walnut. That's it. And after it sits for about 10 to 15 minutes, I can wipe off the excess. Jason from Bourbon Moth does a really good job of explaining how to use Rubio, and he states that you can't wipe enough of it off. So I just keep wiping until there's really no more left.
And just like the rest of my pieces, this chair will also get leather foot pads. I think they look classy and they hold up much, much better than those cheap felt feet that just either fall off or don't do anything at all. Does this stall my chisel? Yes. Is it fun to do? Also, yes. Before we get over to the beauty shots, I'd like to ask you guys if you have taken anything out of this video, if you learned anything, if you enjoyed it at all, uh, just give it a like and a subscribe. It really helps me out and it allows me to continue to do what I love and make more videos for you guys. Thank you. This has been Nate from Burrow and Feather. Thanks for watching.